Oh shit, it's working! It's working! So I've had this pet peeve for a long time. You know when there's text that's been redacted in like a report or image or whatever, and they do this sort of effect to it? This is super bad. It's not a secure way to redact information. It's just begging to have your redacted data leaked somehow. There's a few ways you typically see this effect. There's blurring, swirling, and very commonly, pixelation. We've always had a hard policy at Bishop Fox to only ever use black bars fully covering the sensitive data as a redaction technique, but I'm sick of seeing pixelated text out there on the internet. I'm gonna make a program that can unredact pixelated text and finally, I hope, put an end to this practice once and for all. So to make things more interesting, about a year ago, this company called JumpSec looked into this exact problem and found there's a tool called DPix that does more or less this. It depixelates pixelated text. Um, and found that it works better in theory than in practice and couldn't get it to actually work on some text that um, wasn't already part of its test images. Um, and so at the end, they uh, issued this challenge to the internet uh, to be able to, to depixelate this uh, text that you're seeing right here. And if there's one thing I like, it's a challenge. So challenge accepted. For our attack, I'm going to assume that the attacker knows the following information. A, the font of the redacted text, B, the font size of the redacted text, and C, that it's of text to begin with. Uh, I think this is pretty reasonable since you usually see redactions in documents, documents with other text that you can read. You almost never see redacted text on its own with no other reference. And this holds true for our challenge text here with uh, some reference uh, text you can see right above it. So we can discover the font size and the font itself. Okay, so first we have to understand how pixelation works under the hood. It's not that hard. What it does is take the image of your text and break it down into an n by n grid. The algorithm then just goes through each of these blocks and assigns it a color value equal to the average of all the pixels in that block. That's pretty simple, right? Uh, so how can we go about undoing this process and getting the redacted text underneath? We can't simply undo this process since information is lost along the way. For a given block, the pixels could originally have been in any number of original configurations. So at a really high level, what Unredactor is going to do is it's going to guess a letter, right? Like take the letter A here. It's going to render it to headless Chrome, and then it's going to do the pixelization process on that letter, right? And then we can just compare the our guessed image with a given pixelation, uh, pixelation against the reference image, the challenge text, and then just do an image comparison to see how close or far away they are, right? And that can have a kind of a fuzzy threshold to it. So we don't need to get it exact. We just need to get it within a certain threshold, basically. Um, that way we can try the letter A, see how well it did, try the letter B, see how well it did, and keep going and going and going, right? So the first thing we need to do is guess the X and Y offsets of the image. Uh, you see, when you pixelate something, there's two degrees of freedom that I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, if you think of this as a single static grid, then where you place the image on top of that grid matters to the resulting redacted image. Um, in GIMP, when you pixelate something, it even gives you that option to specify that offset. Um, you can see that right here. Uh, but even though you can modify the offsets, the actual value in terms of when we're going to be brute forcing it um, is mostly random, determined by where you happen to initially click when selecting this bounding box. So we're going to have to guess this. The process of guessing this offset is actually very similar to guessing any other letter. We just need to enumerate every possible offset. So we just go offset 0, 0, try all the letters. Offset 0, 1, try all the letters. And see if anything comes back with a successful match. If there's any good matches for any of the letters, then we save that offset as a possible good match here. And then come back to them later to try. Um, so for our challenge text, we see that offset 1, 3 comes up as a good hit. The letter H is a very good strong hit um, for that first letter. And also offset 1, 4. Um, you'll notice that a 1, 3 and 1, 4 are kind of nearby each other, and that's not by accident. Um, offsets that are nearby each other also produce images that are sort of similar. So we should actually expect that sort of thing to happen. Let's take another closer look at the challenge text from JumpSec. Uh, if you look at it really closely here, you'd see that it has a bunch of color in it. Uh, what gives? Why has it got a uh, color in it? Shouldn't this be uh, black and white text? Um, the, the answer is that uh, I'm not really completely sure why this happens sometimes and why it doesn't. It has to do with the rasterizing 
of uh, when it's actually rendered to a screen. Um, you can see here, like if you zoom way, way in on some text that I took um, from inside of Notepad, that um, you get the same sort of effect. But this doesn't happen notably when we render text in headless Chrome, uh, which is what uh, Unredactor is going to be using. So um, first, we have to change our image here into grayscale. Uh, this is going to lose some information technically, but it's not such a big deal um, since we only need a, a kind of mostly matching uh, image. So it's not a big deal. OK, so what you're going to see in Unredactor here, on the top line, it shows you the uh, redacted text. That's our challenge image. Um, the next image down below that, it's going to show you the current guess. That's the thing that it's guessing right now. And then the one right below that is uh, the best guess. That's basically the, the best guess that we have so far. Um, you can see this isn't the world's best uh, front end. Uh, look, I'm not a front end engineer. Actually, I'm not a back end engineer either. Maybe, maybe I'm just not an engineer. I do make stuff though. Does that count? I think that counts. Whatever. All right, let's run this thing. Uh, we're pretty sure that the offset is one three and that uh, the character set is gonna be like, uh, I'm trying a character set of uh, uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and then a few special characters with dashes. You can kind of see in the image that there's probably dashes. Cheating a little bit there, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, yeah, let's run this thing and see what it looks like. Oh shit, it's working. It's working. This is really cool, but uh, I kind of wish it said like, remember to drink your Ovaltine or something. Check out how close we got. This top image is the challenge image, the original one. And on the bottom is the guest image that Unredactor created. They're like basically identical. That's kind of cool. So I reached out to Caleb Herbert at JumpSec with the solution for the challenge. And he confirmed that it was correct. Score. Huge shout out to Caleb at JumpSec for putting this on. It was a ton of fun. Uh, he also asked me to not release the full answer to the challenge text. That way you folks can uh, have a go at it yourself if you'd like. So remember, uh, the next time you're redacting some text in a document, always do this. Never this, never this, and definitely not this. Thanks a lot.